بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ڈیئر فرینڈز اینڈ پارٹیسپینٹس ویلکم ٹو دس سیشن آف اسلام فار یوتھ سیریز آئی ہوپ یو ہیو بین ہیونگ بلیسڈ رمضان اینڈ وی آر آلموسٹ ہاف وے تھرو اینڈ ہاؤ از ٹائم فلائز وی آر جسٹ ویٹنگ فار رمضان اینڈ ناؤ اٹس آلموسٹ ہاف وے تھرو اینڈ یو نو واٹ لائف از گوئنگ ٹو بی لائک دیٹ از ویل اینڈ ون ڈے ویل ریئلائز دیٹ وی آر وی ہیو بیکم اولڈ اینڈ دا تھنگز دیٹ وی ویر ریلیشنگ have already been uh, have already taken their shape and uh, so it's it's like this uh, in every sphere and actually this gives, gives us this reminder a very strong reminder and that is that we must value time as much as we can time is of paramount importance if you have to achieve something in life then we have to give weightage to time it is the biggest investment that you have it is the biggest means that you can have to do the best out of whatever you can so make the best out of the time that you have and try to utilize your time because it's going to pass anyway and it is best that if it passes with productivity and some contribution to mankind so today we are going to wrap up this uh, uh, this particular topic that we have been discussing for the past uh, five or six weeks which relates to moral behavior uh, we have been discussing various human values uh, and various uh, areas in which all of us need to brush ourselves up particularly in advancement of our character in the uh, in making ourselves better human beings so forgiveness and sympathy and empathy selflessness <coughs> uh, to be people who are uh, truthful individuals who adhere to justice and all those fine values uh, which mankind can boast of So uh, today, inshallah, I'm going to uh, try and uh, make a summary of what we have uh, discussed in a way that it's going to present to you a practical uh, sort of a thing, a, pr- a practical strategy, I would say, in which you can really uh, make yourselves uh, people who are better than before, who are high achievers in their, uh, in, in their conduct, in their uh, capacity as human beings, So there is, a, there is a certain amount of exercise. When I say exercise, of course, it relates to an effort that we have to put in in order to become better human beings. So uh, the, uh, the topic today is how to achieve this self-improvement. All the values that we were talking about in our previous sessions, all the universal human, and so they are so cherished, all these values that all of us would like to have them. And we would like to score more than 90% Uh, in all these areas, how can we actually uh, give ourselves a very good chance of becoming a high achiever in all these values? So we, I'm going to start off with some suggestions, some areas that uh, this self-improvement uh, can be suggested. And uh, I'm going to start off by actually suggesting certain short-term measures. And later on, I'll follow them up with certain long-term measures. So there's a short-term you know, solution to this Uh, to this aspect of improving ourselves, which we can do right away. And then there is this, uh, uh, this, this attitude building that we have to do. So one is the attitude that you can adopt immediately uh, and look for certain areas that you need to improve. And on the other hand, there is this long-term strategy that you can adopt. And I do hope that if you use that and adopt that long-term strategy, inshallah, it's going to be very productive. And especially in this month of Ramadan, Uh, when all of us are uh, have this thirst to to become better human beings to do good to be pious as much as possible so this is going to hopefully inshallah be especially very beneficial to you in the months that we are in and uh, let us plan how we can become better individuals so they, these are basically tips for self improvement and as i said the first of our uh, the first thing that i'd like to suggest to you would be Uh, short-term tips that, that we new, need to undertake regarding uh, uh, self-improvement. So let me point out the first thing. The first thing is that if you have to improve yourself, uh, then the, the, the only way out for, to, for, self account, as for self-improvement, the, the only way to achieve self-improvement is through self-accountability. So in other words, self-improvement is synonymous, is tantamount. It has, it's means the same thing as self-accountability. If you want to become an improved person, then self-accountability is the only way forward. And I'm now going to present to you these four tips regarding self-accountability. Uh, 
The first thing is that every one of us must give ourselves time every day in which we look back, uh, uh, in which we not only look back on the day that we have been, that we have spent, but at the same time, uh, we are able to evaluate. And when I say evaluate, of course, it means that we are able to take a glance and also at the same time, uh, we are able to analyze uh, what we have done the whole day. And I think the best way uh, perhaps to do that would be when we are going to sleep uh, at night, when we have called it a day and uh, it's bedtime. So this is the best time to have a review of our activities that we did the whole day. Because you see, once you close your eyes, you can just imagine what went through the whole day. What were the blem blemishes that I did? What were the faults that I committed? And you can uh, see that there would be certain faults in which you could blame yourselves very much. And there could be other faults in which you think that they were perhaps accidental or you, were, you didn't realize that they, you were doing something wrong. So the first tip regarding self-accountability, the first short-term tip is to fix a time every day of your life, preferably when you go to bed, in which you just close your eyes and imagine what you had done wrongly and make that commitment that, inshallah, next day, if that situation arises once again, I'm going to control myself. So that is the first thing that uh, you must uh, think. The second thing is that you have to realize that this is a persistent uh, process. It's not going to end uh, in a couple of weeks or maybe months or years. It's a, it's a lifetime process. So fixing a time is one thing and fixing a time for the rest of your life every single day. That's another thing. And that's the second tip that is essential, that you have to be consistent. You have to do it every day, just as you have food every day, just as you sleep every day. All these are essential life routines because they maintain your body. So if you want to maintain your soul, which is also a part of us, we have to pay attention to our soul as well. And the best attention that you can pay your soul is to think about this, that you, every day you, you're going to realize you, you, are going to, you are going to clean yourselves up. Like, it's just like, a, it's just like a vacuum, vacuuming your, your house or your, or your room. You see, what happens is that it's, not, it's never sufficient to clean your homes once and for all. Maybe you could do it twice a week or once a week. But you just cannot say that once I have cleansed my room or cleaned my room or my house, uh, then this is something that I can be sure of for the rest of maybe a year or so. No, you see, dust keeps settling in. Even if there is no dust, we, we have our own bad habits and we make that place dirty or filthy. So you see, cleaning is a, is a, is a, is a constant process. Physical cleaning is a constant process. Similarly, this spiritual cleans cleanliness is also a constant process. So you have to pick up that duster or whatever you have and think of as if you are scrubbing your heart, you're cleaning your heart, you're shining your heart. And the way you do it is that you realize, well, I have been naughty, I have been impertinent, I have been rude, I have been angry, I have said those bad things. And I'm going to uh, talk to myself uh, every day, sometime of uh, that day and for the rest of my life just as I eat food every single day. So this is the thing that you have to do every single day of your day, of your, of your, of your life. You might ask me that, well, why are these tips called short-term tips when you are going to do it in such a long-term way? Well, I'm going to get to that as well, because these are basically short-term in their, in their impact. Uh, as far as the impact is concerned, uh, they, they, the impact comes into being uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that you'll realize that, well, this is something which you are achieving short term, but it's not staying with you. It's not permanent with you. So that is where the long term tips come in with, that we're going to just discuss in, in a while. So the first short term tip was that you have to fix a time. The second was that you have to do that every single day of your life. And remember, it's not a difficult thing. It's just five minutes, it's maybe even less. It's like uh, developing that habit. Uh, you see, when you go to bed, I used to remember that I, I, in, my, in my past, I didn't brush my teeth when I used to go to sleep. I just brushed my teeth once a day in the morning. And then, then someone made me realize how important it is to brush one's teeth before sleeping. 
And I developed that habit of uh, brushing my teeth before going to bed. And such is this habit now that I just simply cannot go to bed unless I, I clean my teeth. And if I forget and I'm in bed, something in me makes me get up. I go to the bathroom once again, brush my teeth and come back. So it's, it just it sticks with you. So it's just a question of developing that habit. Once you develop that habit, you will feel that you just don't want to miss it. So if you are able to fix this habit that every single day of your life, you're going to make that, that uh, accountability test in which you are going to think about what you did every single day and then make a fresh commitment that, inshallah, I'll not repeat these things. And remember, uh, now the third, thir the third tip uh, creeps in right here. What happens is that most of the time, when we make commitments that I'm going to be a better person tomorrow, I'm not going to lose my calm, I'm not going to be angry, I'm not going to use bad words, I'm not going to swear. And what happens is the very next day, that thing happens even more, even more intensely. The more you make a promise, the more it seems that you are likely to break it. So it is here that the third tip comes in, and that is never lose hope. Because you see, habits don't go away uh, like just like that. You have to work for them. It could be months and years at times in order to control ourselves. And then it's a constant effort. If you are able to control yourself once, it's not that you'll always be able to control yourself. Hence the persistence which we mentioned in the last point. And this third tip is that never lose hope. Never think that uh, you are a person who is worthless, who makes commitments every day. And the next day, he or she, you, you just start, end up, you end up breaking that commitment. You see, what happens is that our bodies are made in a way in which all of us, uh, when, we, when we develop a habit, it becomes like an impulsive thing. You do it without thinking. It just happens. So if you have to get rid of something, think that this is going to go away gradually. Slowly, it's going to go away. And... Uh, the Arabic word for Satan is Iblis, as you might be knowing in Arabic. The Quran calls Satan as Iblis. And Iblis means a person who has lost hope. So you see, the biggest weapon of Satan is that since he's lost hope himself in his own uh, salvation, in his own future, the biggest weapon he uses against mankind is he makes them lose hope in their own selves. They think, the, he makes you think that you are good for nothing. You're a worthless person who should just forget about uh, improving yourselves because every day you make a commitment and the next day you break it. So he makes you a person who, is, who loses hope, loses confidence in your own self. And it is here that you must realize that every, with every fall, you have to get up. You must rise after every fall. Whatever has happened, the gravest of sins that you have done, because you see, to the Almighty, to God, it's not the sin which counts as much as our attitude after that bad habit or mistake that we did. So if we are penitent, if we feel sorry for doing something bad, we apologize to the person that we did something uh, or offended someone and make amends for that, that is something which is actually needed. So we just cannot be uh, fault free. We cannot be sinless individuals. The real thing is that whenever we commit that mistake, we have to be people who, who never lose hope, who are always positive, who always think that, well, if today I'm not being able to control myself, inshallah, the coming day or the coming week or the coming month or the coming year, I'm going to be, I'm going to improve myself. And you see, this helps because when you suggest to yourself, which is called uh, self-suggestion or auto-suggestion, this has an impact on your subconscious. When you talk to yourself that I'm going to be a better person, I'm not going to lose hope, and I'm going to improve myself every day, even if you don't actually, this talking back to your soul, to your own inner, con uh, inner self, has at that imperceptible effect. You don't realize it, but it has an effect. Because talking to yourself is something as if you're programming yourself, as if you are uh, you are whispering certain things to yourself, which are being absorbed by an unknown thing in our, in our soul, and it comes out at the right time. So the third tip is don't, don't lose hope. And the fourth short-term tip is always look for a good feedback. Well, it could be your sibling, it could be your friend, it could be your parent, it could be your children, anyone who is close to you. Because you what, what happens is that uh, if you have a good feedback, or even if it is indirect, maybe, or direct, you get to know because there are certain things which we do wrongly without realizing. We just do them. And as soon as uh, someone makes us realize, do we realize, well, we were doing something wrong. So feedback is 
also a very good thing in order to make yourselves more aware of what you are doing uh, wrongly. And the best thing perhaps would be that you confide in your in one of your friends or your closest confidants and tell that person that I'd like to improve myself and please tell me your assessment of myself. How do you think I am? And don't flatter me. Don't you know, don't need to praise me needlessly. I would like you to point out my flaws because you see, there are many flaws that we know ourselves but that we have. But as I said, there are certain flaws which are only known when someone points them out to you because you do some things which are wrong in your own routine without realizing them. So have someone give you that feedback. And yes, that feedback could be exaggerated. For example, if it is coming from your uh, sister or brother, he could be very annoyed with you and he or she could say something which is far, far more than you actually are. But again, uh, you see, you can always cut that thing to size. You can always see that if this, is, this, this thing is there, maybe it is blown out of proportion, but then there is a certain element of truth also, so I have to control myself. So always good to have a feedback from a confidant, from a friend, and make it more realistic by realizing that if there is an exaggeration, you can always uh, understand that exaggeration. So these are the four short-term tips that I'm going to, uh, that I would like to suggest to you. So just to recap, the first was, anyone remembers what the first was? Take time you know, every day to reflect. Yeah, yes, that's it. So the first is that you have to fix a time every day, every single day. Okay. And this, uh, the second is, let me ask Manahil. Manahil, do you remember the second point? It was persistence. Absolutely. The second thing, the second point was that it's not just going to be a couple of days in your life or a couple of weeks. It has to be all the way. And Alina, what would you like to, to remind us of the third point? Um, never lose hope. That's it. Never lose hope in yourselves. Just go on and on and on and on and just don't look back. That's wonderful, Alina. And who's going to tell me the last one? Okay, let me ask Mehru Muzaffar. Ask and listen to feedback. Yeah. So look for good feedback. And uh, if that is something that you're able to do, that you'll find that something very, very uh, real is being, is being actually communicated to you. Because you see, feedback which is given by a sincere friend is always going to be very, very close to the truth. And you'll realize that this is something which is uh, which is always uh, which always has that ring of earnestness in it and there's one thing that i'd like all of you to to also consider that you see at times people who give that feedback to you they use harsh words they'll say well you're good for nothing oh you're absolutely a fool i mean they'll use extreme words so you see the best way to benefit from a feedback or a criticism is to ignore the harshness and look at the substance so maybe if a person says, well, you are, a, you just don't know how to talk. I mean, you, you talk in a very rash way. If this is a feedback that you get, then you can immediately realize that there, there, there is one thing wrong in me, or there could be one thing wrong in me. And that is that maybe I don't use my, my, my I have, don't have a judicious choice of words. I don't select appropriate words. So when, he, when the person says you are absolutely good for nothing and you're always uh, using that those words which are which don't make a person feel confident. So what you can do is you can see that well that person is slightly angry with you, and the anger has made him or her express the concern in a very strong way. So forget about the the strength or the harshness. Look at the substance, and that is the best way that you can really benefit. Because always think that people who are criticizing you are in fact some people who are doing a favor to you. Because if they are criticizing you and uh, you are still uh, in a close circle and someone is pointing out your faults, it is all the good, especially if the person is from your own family or friends. Because if that fault is pointed out by the world at large as you enter into professional lives by a wider circle, you'll find yourself much more exposed. So if it is done at a, at a smaller scale by close friends, it is always something that you can look up to and really think that that person is actually a, your benefactor. He's done a favor to you or she's done a favor to you. So these are the four points that we all have to uh, try and make the best out of it if we want to uh, go through this uh, process of self-improvement. And remember that you must make it, make it an issue to be people who would like to improve themselves. Make it an issue. 
don't think that it is something that you can always do when you grow up or maybe you can just leave it for for later on because you see habits develop at this time the time that you are in right now or maybe slightly even earlier but still uh, you don't you haven't lost the time you still have the time to to rectify yourself so just don't delay this start today and when you start today start with this uh, this feeling that the best time to start is actually the month of ramadan where accountability is the name of the game if you ask me one password or one catchword for ramadan i would say self accountability and i think this is where this month is the best place to start this process of self accountability okay now i'm going to move to those long term measures by sharing my screen and uh, this is basically something that uh, you might do it in the form of this chart so you see this is a chart that has been made for you especially you have a date that you can put into a, a week starting maybe uh, tomorrow tomorrow is is uh, tomorrow is sunday so maybe on monday you can start it's uh, in, uh, in a fresh and you have 7 days of your week being laid out in front of you and you have uh, sc1 and sc2 and sc3 and sc4 so sc actually means shortcoming or a mistake that you'd like to overcome so write these mistakes in order of i would say ascending order the least one at the top the next uh, one which is more stronger uh, at number 2 and and so on and so forth and the fourth one which is the most difficult to overcome for you at the bottom i just give you these four so i think that if you just start off with these four things i could they could be more than these four things they could be less than these four things but just in average if you have those four bad habits that you would like to get rid of write the first bad habit that which is the least of the bad habits uh, which is it should represent sc1 that's the first one two is the the the, the second one the third and the fourth so on and so forth and monday tuesday of course they make you realize that uh, these are the days now for every instance of that bad habit that you do put a black dot on that particular box for example if in, on and uh, let me give you an example for example your first shortcoming that you'd like to overcome is anger uh, or bad words used in anger abusive language let's say so what you'll do is that uh, for every instance of abusive language or bad words that you used on monday starting let's say from monday the 20th uh, uh, or what 26th which 26th of april is monday so the first you instant of a bad uh, occurrence you'll put a black dot uh, in that box and for a second occurrence you'll put another black dot and for a third occurrence you'll put another black dot and then similarly for tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday this will be done for the first bad habit and second secondly the same procedure will be adopted for the second bad habit again a black dot would be put there in which you would like to overcome remember we we are now pointing towards those bad habits and every black dot will represent uh, an instance in which that occurrence of that bad habit took place so the target would be that actually uh in a certain week you have as minimum as you can those black dots should be as minimum as possible and in fact uh, if there is a week in which the whole page is white in which in which there are no black dots that would mean that for 7 days for those four habits there was not a single occurrence in which you thought that well this is something you were be ashamed of and that would actually mean that you spent one whole week uh absolutely clean of those four bad habits i know this is an extremely uh, this is something which is not easily achievable it takes a lot of effort it will take a lot of your uh time as well i mean not time as much as your effort and your thinking that i am not going to be a person who is going to do this and this and this and then you see what you can do is that once you achieve a certain uh certain height or a certain target you can reward yourself give yourself a star for every week in which i mean this is this is now all arbitrary uh, it depends on who you are how how you're going to look after yourself you can give yourself a certain uh in certain uh compensation or you can give yourself a certain uh, incentive that if there is a time in which there is a week in which there are absolutely uh, no dots or maybe very few of them then this would be a week in which i have achieved high and if you can spread this to 6 weeks i mean 
uh, I think there are, they would be the first six weeks are the most toughest. It's not that you're going to get a white sheet in the first six weeks. Uh, I mean, it's quite improbable. But if you are able to, then, then this is something that you have really achieved. So the first six weeks, you're going to see a lot of dots in your, in your chart if you make that. So six weeks would have six charts. And by the end of the sixth week, you, you will see, inshallah, that there is a pattern emerging in which the black dots are so slowly going to be reduced. And there could be a time, maybe after another six weeks, in which you'll have that blank white sheet. Now, the, the, the challenge is to maintain that white sheet as much as possible. And once this is something that you have done for those four bad habits, you can then take up the next set of four bad habits, and so on and so forth. So you see, this is a way out, a practical suggestion for you. It's like a challenge that you can take upon yourself. But remember, you'll have to be super self-motivated for this. I mean, because there's no one to check you. It's like you yourselves checking your own self. Or there's another suggestion that I can give. And that is, if you have a friend with whom you can share your sheet, and the sheet has things that you would like to share, then there is always this, uh, this mutual help that you can get. Uh, in being inspired from someone uh, who would let you know that, well, this is how you could fare better or this is how I was doing badly and this is how I can share my experience. So that is also one, one way out. But of course, that would totally depend on your own, uh, I would say, choice. But if you don't con uh, confide in anyone, that is fine. Keep it to yourself. And remember, because of the fact that we have to become good individuals, if we become improved individuals, we are to gain. We are to gain in the hereafter. We are to gain in this world. As good individuals, we will be people who will be looked up to in this world. And as good individuals who have tried to become better human beings, we will be rewarded in the hereafter as well. So basically, it's your own effort. It's your own motivation. And unless you have that motivation in you, uh, you, might, you may actually feel bored after a couple of weeks. But it is here that you must get hold of yourself. And remember that just as there are this, these challenges in life, like, for example, you have your professional life, you have a career, you have certain targets, and you would like to become a better person in those targets. So make this uh, an, an issue of your life, a target of your life, that I have to become a better individual. And this is a certain strategy that I have adopted. And therefore, let me become a person who is going to adopt this strategy in letter and in spirit. Okay, now uh, I'd also like to share something more with you, which might be, of course, helpful vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of the things that you might and uh, that you might be already aware of. But maybe there are these. Uh, I would say these are five things: A, B, C, D, E, which are just written before you, uh, which might also be helpful in making yourselves first people who are individuals who uh, who would like to become high achievers as human beings. So the first thing that I've already been discussing is conscience. Always follow your conscience. The conscience never lies. Your conscience is something which always is going to guide you in, in, in the right uh, way. Uh, and hopefully, because in most cases, the conscience is not gone dead, a living and vibrant conscience is going to tell you what the right course of action is. Always follow it, even if it means that you have to sacrifice your own self-interest, even if it means that you're going to lose something. So the first thing is be a conscientious individual. Always follow your conscience. The second thing, equally important, especially when you're entering uh, adulthood and uh, in, a, in a certain age, keep your eyes pure. Don't let them take liberty. Don't, uh, don't stare at the opposite gender in a way that causes those feelings and arouses you. And uh, of course, we all know what that means. So if you keep yourselves pure, you'll find that you are an individual who has maintained that inner purity in, in a way in which that purity can actually be used for many other, uh, many other positive pursuits. So the purer you are in the eye, the purer your pursuits will be. And if you are more indulgent in these pursuits, you'll find yourself to be led away by your desires, and then you can you will just be you'll just end up wondering uh, in all sorts of things. The third thing, which is also very important, is the rule of law. And I actually stated here because I'd like to underscore this that in Islam, uh, rule of following the rule of law is just not a civic duty. It's not just a civic duty; it is a religious duty as well. 
So the Quran has told us, and I think we have discussed it someplace earlier on, that in, you must follow the law of your land. And if you follow the law of your land, it is not that you are merely following a certain, as I said, a civic, a civic duty. No, it's more than that. It's uh, your religious duty to follow the law of the land. Thus, for example, the laws that exist in your country, for example, uh, if you are texting while driving, uh, remember, this is an offense. It's, it's, a, it's a civic offense. It's also a religious offense because you're breaking the law. If you are doing underage driving, that again is something which you are uh, uh, doing wrongly. It's you are committing an offense and that is not just a civic offense. It's a religious offense as well. Similarly, you can think of all sorts of laws which, are, which, are, which have been legislated in your country. You must follow them in letter and in spirit. And the fourth thing is that uh, what we have been discussing in, in so many sessions in, in our past is that never be judgmental in your behavior. Never judge people by their appearance. Never judge people by their looks. Never judge people by what they say or what they do or what they believe in. Because you see, we have absolutely, uh, we, we, are, we fall short of the data in which we can judge a person. Because we are exposed to just a small fraction of a person's outward behavior how he is from his inside or her inside or how all the pressures are there for him or her to follow and what he is trying to do and what she is not trying to do is simply beyond us. So always concentrate on your own self. If you have to judge anyone, let it be your own self. Let it be you who are to be judged because I can judge my own self because for my own self, I know what I am, who I am, what my aspirations are, what my bad habits are. So the, th the fourth thing is, Never be judgmental in your behavior. And the last thing is have that concern for others. And <clears throat> the month of Ramadan, of course, is something which has always has that enhanced feeling in us that we have to look after other people. We have to be people who, who must never think that we there is no one else than us. That selfish attitude. Of course, we, are, we should be able to talk about our own selves, concern about our own selves, uh, uh, work for our own family. But it should not be that we are just thinking of our own selves. Having concern of other people is something that we must actually, uh, you must always uh, have this, uh, this natural inclination. You see, human beings, they have been born and they have been created in a way that they must have that feeling for others. Uh, remember that every single person uh, on this earth is part of this large family, which we call the human family. We are part of this humankind family. And if we are part of this human family, then remember, it is something of an obligation that we look after other people. I just was reading uh, today in the newspaper uh, that there has been an exceptional surge of these COVID cases in, in India. And we have about almost close to uh, 350,000 cases being reported almost every day for the past couple of days in, in, the, in, in India. And people are dying because of a lack of oxygen. They don't have enough supplies of oxygen left. Uh, we, have, uh, we have that uh, news. Uh, I'm not sure whether you would be aware of that or not, that just about two days ago, uh, an Indonesian submarine went missing with 53 people on board. So submarine with 53 people is missing for the last two days. And th the world community is trying to locate that submarine because, of course, it's such a difficult thing. And then there are so many other calamities. We know there is there are these shortfalls. We have uh, famine. We have disease. We have so many things in the African countries. You see, the, this you don't think that this concern should be related merely to a concern uh, regarding your surroundings. Enlarge your surroundings. For you, this is this whole. You are a citizen of the globe. You're not just a citizen of the U.S. or or the U.K. or Australia or any country that you live in. That is your first identity. But your larger identity is that you are a citizen of this globe. You are a citizen of the whole world. And if there is something going wrong or something happening badly to people, wherever it is, it should strike a chord in you. It should, it should make you realize and, and show your concern. And concern is not all, always shown by sending money. Of course, that if you can do is, is, is very welcome. But maybe praying for those souls, uh, sh expressing your concern, and maybe looking after people, if, if anyone comes in, in your, in, in, you, you get in touch with someone who is afflicted with some misery, hearing out her problems or his problems. So there are so many things that you can do. So the last thing is that 
all of us have to show this concern. So with these words, I end my session today. Uh, we can, of course, discuss uh, some of the questions that might come to your mind. But do remember, my dear friends, my dear participants, that this is of paramount importance that somehow, somehow we all embark upon this voyage of self-accountability. Uh, it's a beautiful voyage, I would tell you. It's, it's something that you'll enjoy. But for this, you must develop that habit. And if you do develop that habit, you'll find that every single day is spent in, in, in that euphoria, in, that, in, that, in, in, a, in a particular uh, feeling that you think that you are trying to get better. And remember, the, it, is the try, it is the effort which counts much more than the destination. If you have started your journey, remember that this is something which God would really like. Whether you reach the destination or not is, is not in our control. But what is in our control is to make the effort. So let us never fall short of the effort. Okay, so, so do we have questions for today or any suggestions that we can discuss? Anybody, question? Uh, if no one else has anything to say, before you, you said you should try to avoid having a, a lustful gaze to avoid creating arousal in oneself. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to be leering at people and making them uncomfortable and why it would be annoying to be stared at. But mm -hmm. why should one avoid creating the feeling of arousal in oneself? Why would that be considered? Well, uh, one thing is that if, if that happens naturally, of course, that is, uh, that is something that is, uh, cannot be objected to. But when you do it in a way that you are staring at the opposite gender, then you see one of the reasons, uh, one of the negative effects for that is that ultimately, uh, it's going to affect your married life. A person who is uh, for, for a person who is born in in in, uh, in a religious uh, society, marriage is a very important component of uh, our our lives. And you see, the more you are distracted by that arousal from some someone outside your marriage, the lesser interest ultimately are you going to develop in your spouse. That is something that's going to slightly draw you away, and you you're going to look for arousals outside your marriage bond because you see. This is something which becomes an addiction. Uh, the sexual urge is it's such a powerful thing, it's such a potent thing, then if, that if you start to arouse it or make it more palpable or more overwhelming uh, on your old self by, for example, looking at porn or maybe looking at inappropriate images or uh, the like, uh, you'll find that it has become, it slowly becomes an addiction. And when it becomes an addiction, it, it deeply affects not only your, your, uh, your inner purity, I would say, which is slightly difficult to explain, but uh, more than that, it affects your married life. And even after your married life, you, you feel like having that uh, satisfaction from outside your spouse. So if you have that feeling continuously, what happens is that the bond between the spouses is, is affected. And if that is affected, the whole family is affected. Because you see, what happens is that then, then the children which grow in such a family, they are not uh, properly taken care of. I have seen so many examples in which either the husband or the wife, when they start having this habit or they, when they've already developed this habit before marriage, uh, they just cannot contain themselves amongst each other. And they have to look outside that marriage bond. And the, the, the person to suffer the most in that case is the child who is going to grow up uh, or he's going to have the chance to growing up because he needs a mother and a father at the same time, the affection of a mother and a father who are bonded together as well. So these are uh, slightly, I mean, uh, things which which take have, which have a negative effect over a period of time. And they they are generally not realized immediately. I see your reasoning. Um, can you actually explain the inner purity? Well, inner purity means that uh, this is something in which you would like your your person to be devoid of all bad habits so everything which is which is going to tarnish your soul in any way you see every bad habit has an effect on yourself for example if you start speaking i mean you start lying you start uh, swearing false oaths you start swearing false testimonies uh, you start to be dishonest to people you start deceiving people so all these things what they happen is that they have an effect on your soul and on your conscience, it, your conscience dies. So an impure soul is a, is, a, is a soul who has no conscience left in himself or herself. Uh, good, right and wrong have no meaning for that person. 
uh, whatever is advantageous for that person is right as long as it is it serves his or her interest uh, even if it is not good for other people so a person gets selfish for that he or she doesn't care about uh, how other people might be and her own or his own will to do what is right it almost diminishes so all it's like having all those bad habits being added up and a person who is who is a, an amalgam of those bad habits is a person who in the in the in the terminology of religion is called a person who has started to ha have an impure soul or whose purity of his soul is getting affected so in the case of if you don't mind can i ask one more thing of course um so in the case of like having a or like purity of the eyes affecting marriage we've seen like many people who have boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever partners and then once they get married they're dedicated to their partner specifically they're not going to their exes or whatever so why is it bad to have a partner before marriage right so what happens is that you see this is this could be a case or a sample that you might have seen in your life and i i can i would perfectly relate to that but you see on a larger data if you have a data uh, comprising of a larger section of people you'll see that uh, this is this is not the case i mean this is the case these are a few exceptions that happen what happens is that the the urge which has which grips a person uh, the urge for variety the urge for uh, going i mean doing things which are different which are you just cannot confine yourself it gets the better of you human instinct has that uh, that thing you know, deeply ingrained and it needs a lot of courage or a lot of force to just dedicate yourself to one partner and when you say you dedicate yourself to one partner actually it it does not proscribe or it doesn't uh, it stop many people from being unfaithful and at the same time pose being faithful what happens is that their hearts are they could be they could i mean they would not be doing something but the but the interest is so strong outside that the marriage bond which should actually grow uh, it's not growing it's actually uh, um, uh, suffering i would say so that too is a loss so it's not just a case of being stationary that marriage bond has to to strengthen itself and because of the fact that a person has a proclivity of going outside marriage uh looking at all those things that you find on the internet you'll find that there is a there are huge studies which tell us that how this makes people dissatisfied their own sexual lives become challenged their the partners they themselves start to uh behave in a very disinterested way they might not connect with other people but then they would not even connect with their own uh spouse the way they should you see the the energy draws it it saps their energy and it, they have nothing left for their spouse so it's it's like a catch 22 sort of situation oh okay that makes sense thank you oh could i actually um could i request that you like i don't know email some of those studies to the class or something because i I've, i've got a christian friend and i argue this kind of thing with him sometimes and i haven't been able to find like studies that or find any correlation between like a ethical breakdown of conscience and use of of you know uh whatever you well my my actually data is not based on empirical study this is is based on uh, meeting so many people in the last 30 years uh different cross sections in different countries of this world and of course connecting with people so it's it's like more of an uh, personal experience and uh, i have heard of those studies but uh, i i cannot refer you to those studies i am talking about an experience with people like me myself and a number of people that i know uh have gone through so so that is my source basically okay so so it's anecdotal got it yeah. i think i guess we'll inshallah meet uh, next week once again uh, and we'll start off a new module uh so we've uh, finished this uh, module of uh, self account i mean moral behavior and i would once again request you to please uh give importance to these tips of uh, self improvement because this is something that you will really really uh, like when you start doing it uh, you'll feel better more confident and uh, spiritually uh, uplifted as well so thank you very much